I'm going to talk to you today about storyboards and about um, why we use them in media and how important they are and also how to do them whether you think you are artistic or if you don't really have any real drawing ability we can still use a storyboard. Now the reason that we use a storyboard is because imagine that you have come up with an idea for a film or a TV show or an advert you're going to hire a camera crew, so that's going to be people to operate all the equipment and the equipment itself. You're going to hire actors to be in it, and you're probably going to hire um, directors or producers or other people who are also going to be involved. Uh, you might have to hire studio um, equipment or studios themselves to record in. You might have to hire out locations and props. So there's a lot of investment in actual things. And if you then, just then, start to plan, well, how am I going to film it? How do I want this scene to look? Then you're, you're, you're spending a lot of money and not really getting anything back. So a storyboard is kind of like a way to visualise exactly how things are going to look. What camera shot are you going to use? Um, what camera movement are you going to employ? What about the lighting or the style? How are you going to do all of those things? And really, a good storyboard, the director will be able to use it to plan the shots. The cameraman will be able to look at it to understand how to film. Even the actors can refer to it in order to understand how they should play into the scene. So quite often, storyboards are a really essential part of the media industry. So let's start. I'm going to start with just a blank piece of paper and the reason that I'm doing that is because I think it's important to note that um, you don't have to use this sort of structured frame approach. You, can, you don't even have to have the same size boxes or squares for all of your different areas. You can just have uh, different elements and different sizes. So let's make a start with that. So I'm going to start off and I'm just going to do some different boxes. Whilst I'm doing that, you can see here I've got different sizes and I've got different shapes going on. Okay, so as you can see, I've just got some really rough sizes and you can be neat with this or you can uh, choose to use different style sizes with this, it's entirely up to you. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and make a scene of maybe someone having an exam. So my first shot, I want to have like an establishing shot. I kind of want to show the setting and I want to show the character and I kind of want the audience to understand immediately where they are and what's going on. So this is going to be um, an exam. It's, uh, I think the story I want to tell is the pressure or anxiety around being in that environment. So. I'm going to start off with a little table and again I think it's really important to point out I am not the best artist in the world and you can see here I'm really just doing quick lines and you know that's absolutely fine in fact I don't think this is particularly um, strong at all but it, for me it's good enough it shows what's going on On the eyes down. Okay, so you can see here just a very, very quick example. I can see someone sat at a desk um, and it's, it's sort of like they've got a piece of paper in front of them. What else can I do to make it feel more like an exam setting? Um, I can probably try and showcase that sort of idea that we have in an exam of there being rows of people but slightly out of focus. And um, I might choose to make my uh, my lighting now. So it's important to think about when we're doing this as well, how we plan our lighting. So I'm going to have a little bit of low key lighting. Um, I'm going to sort of shade it on this side. This side's all going to be sort of 
much darker, much blurrier. And again, if you can't visually tell it, I can make some notes, can't I? So I can just make some little notes here. Low key lighting. Um, out of focus student. And uh, for mise en son, I might say as well some graffiti on the desk. So I won't be able to zoom in on this desk and start doing all graffiti, but effectively I, I might want some graffiti on the exam desk to try and make it feel a bit more authentic for the time period it's set in. Okay, now that's very basic, but there's some other things that I can do here. I can talk about camera movement as well. So I might want to do a bit of a slow push. Imagine a slow fade onto someone. It really, it tells the audience to focus on that character. Look, look, something's happening, but look closer. Look at what exactly is happening. So it draws your attention and focus in. So to show that movement, I'm gonna start off with a different color pen. So I'm using red here. And I'm gonna say, that is stage one. And with a green pen, I'm going to finish here. And you can see here how I'm just drawing in the second thing. And so that's two. And I might do a little arrow just to show that it's drawn in. And clearly there, now you can see that we've got this sort of slow push into the expression of my character. Right, now for my transition scene... Um, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to cut to a clock and the clock is going to be um, in a, a bit of slow motion, maybe a bit exaggerated, but it's going to be a close-up of a clock and not even the whole clock, just really focusing. So there's the, there's the middle of the clock there. I'm really focusing on this second hand. And... Um, I'm going to annotate because I can't put music on a storyboard, but I'm going to write here, loud ticking and intense. Okay, that's really all I need to do, but you could, just like I've done here, you could think about camera movement, you could think about transitions. Um, Edgar Wright is a brilliant director and I look at some of his transitions on how he makes something really mundane like a clock ticking feel like really quite exciting. Um, so I'm sure there's something more I could do with this and maybe I'll come back to it another time um, in the editing process. But for now, I'm happy that I've got my setting, my establishing shot, my character and the mise en scene, and I've got my clock to show that the time is ticking. And then finally, for the, this scene, I want an extreme close-up of my character. And it's gonna be of my character's face. And what we're going to have, and again, I think I've proven my point that I can't draw, but at the same time, I'm communicating exactly what I want each shot to be. So, there's my face, a few worry lines, and maybe some beads of sweat. Okay, and um, I might put some notes on here as well. So I might just say, anxious, um, sweat. And again, I could put some camera movement on this, but when we're thinking about media language, the camera is talking to us. It's telling us how we should feel, or what we should think, and it's giving us all of that message. Now, I'm trying to get across here that this character feels trapped, they feel claustrophobic because they're in a situation where they are stuck, sat in a chair, at a table and they can't move. So by actually not having any camera movement, I want the camera to be completely still, almost uncomfortably so. So I'll just make a little note there, uncomfortable. And I might um, shift it out of focus. Because all of those things combine together, um, making it out of focus, making it feel uncomfortable, making it really still and unnerving, all of those things, they can really help sell the anxiety. 
um, some other effects. I could have the character stay the same, but the background shrink, and I would show that using my colours, just like I've done. So you can be really creative with this. You don't have to be um, artistic, necessarily, in terms of your actual drawing ability, but you can be as creative as you like. Like I say, you don't have to stick to set frames, you don't have to be neat and tidy. Um, what you're really trying to do is just kind of show this visual story about where your story is going. Right, so I hope that helps. Um, in media, we'd use a storyboard for anything that's a moving image and also sometimes for still images. You can use a storyboard for posters or campaigns. Um, but certainly for a moving image, whether it's an advert, a film, a TV sequence, even if you're planning a trailer, anything like that, this is a really good starting point to kind of bring your um, idea into this visual life.